Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second executive interview of the interview with Rwanda Air CEO, Ms. Yvonne Manzi Makolo, who will take us through and share with us uh, insights from her journey in aviation and leadership roles on the resilience and her experience that she has gone through. This uh, session will be moderated by Ms. Yolanta Strikitsa, who is the Managing Director of Strikitsa Consulting. A brief about Yvonne. Yvonne Manzi Makolo is the CEO of Rwandair, uh, one of the fastest growing airlines in Africa, with a fleet of 12 aircraft serving 29 destinations in Africa, Europe, Middle East, and Asia. That was before COVID. Prior to Yvonne's appointment as CEO of Rwanda Air in April 2018, she was deputy CEO in charge of corporate affairs, responsible for the strategic development and policy formulation at the airline to meet shareholder and regulatory requirements. And uh, we have uh, Ms. Yolanta, who is an aviation um, expert with 20 plus years of aviation experience running on small business that helps in developing careers and young talent in Africa and other continents. I will now hand over to Yolanda, who will take us through the next 40 minutes through this very insightful conversation. Please feel free to send us your comments or your questions, which we will relay to the moderator throughout the session. I now hand over to Yvonne and uh, Yolanta. Over to Great. you. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much, Maureen. Thank you for the very good introduction. And thank you, Yvonne, for joining this um, wonderful um, time, which we're going to have. And I'm sure that will be like that. Well, um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm absolutely delighted to uh, moderate this session because I have absolutely a unique guest with me here, Yvonne Manzi Mukolo. Well, um, Yvonne is one of the few uh, female CEOs in aviation industry in general. Uh, well, unfortunately, the figure is that it's only 4% of ladies lead um, airlines globally. In Africa, I know personally just two ladies who lead airlines, Yvonne was one of them, uh, in terms of national carriers, in terms of national carriers, of course. Um, and generally, um, aviation industry really needs young and proactive uh, females in uh, leadership in aviation. And someone like Yvonne, who put the career through the different roles, through the different industries, growing through the resilience, growing through the change, is extremely interesting case because by her experience, we can learn what airline industry is needs and who is these people who leads us in the future, especially during the COVID time. So um, knowing that our guest is unique in type and knowing our guests have very interesting background, my question to my first question to Yvonne is, well, Yvonne, who are you? Who is that individual who sits uh, with us in this panel? Well, uh, I'm, uh, I'm Rwandan, I'm African, and I'm very privileged to uh, run a fast growing national airline. That's great. Yes, great. Running fast moving, fast growing uh, yes. national airline in, in the middle of Africa. Yeah, sort of is absolute challenge, isn't it? And put on top of that, the pandemic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I think the, the airline industry uh, pre-COVID was already tough enough uh, with so many moving parts and uh, COVID just complicated things a lot more uh, in terms of uh, just shutting down, pretty much shutting down the industry and a lot of airlines had to struggle and rebuild again. Uh, we're still rebuilding, including run there. Um, and I think the, the, the hardest thing has been for, for all everybody in the aviation sector has just been that certainty that's been brought up, brought about by the by the pandemic. But uh, the aviation industry is very resilient uh, and uh, I'm very confident that we'll will bounce back. Yeah, well, absolutely. Um, what particular leadership skills lady like yourself need to actually uh, get through and, and reach a result where you just uh, uh, outlined? 
I don't think it's only uh, ladies. Uh, I, I think uh, in general, in terms of <laughs> in, t in terms of uh, leadership, um, what what this uh, what this pandemic has really taught us is the importance of flexibility, because uh, no plans were not able to implement uh, the majority of our plans, and we had to be very swift and. Uh, and flexible in terms of uh, all areas of, 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 the, of the operations, uh, whether it's uh, passengers, staff, uh, uh, the network, the fleet. Uh, so the, a lot of moving parts and uh, just the, the importance of flexibility and making quick decisions uh, has, been, has been key in terms of uh, uh, leading during this time, uh, these uncertain times. Great, great. Flexibility. I like this word very much. Let's talk about flexibility. Let's talk about flexibility in terms of uh, reflecting it in, um, in yourself, in your career. Uh, your career was fascinating, I mean, very interesting. Yeah, you started as a lady in tech, which is excellent by itself. Then you yeah. flexibly moved through that, through the different continents. Yeah, and sort of Getting either. So, what is that? What sort of how this flexibility in a way, and what other characters get you into this leadership? Just, just give a bit more of uh, of a flavor to it. Well, uh, I'm a big believer in uh, the fact that everything that you go through really prepares you uh, for what's ahead. Uh, so, in addition to tech, what, what makes it what makes my career even more interesting is that I I first started I studied in I studied geography and environmental science, uh, which were very I was very passionate about. So my undergrad uh, that's what I studied, uh, and which has come to become it's become very useful for me uh, right now in the aviation industry with a lot of uh, given the the focus on sustainability. Uh, so environmental science has, has played a key role and geography, that's obvious uh, in aviation, it, it, it really does come yeah. in handy. And um, I, I decided to switch uh, to tech uh, uh, and I studied application uh, development and I worked as a programmer for, for quite a, uh, a number of years. Uh, and when I moved from, uh, from Canada to, to Rwanda, uh, I continued a, a little bit in tech, but then I transitioned and moved to uh, the telecoms industry where I worked in, in marketing and I stayed there for uh, close to 11 years. So I've, I've had a very interesting career path, as you mentioned, but again, uh, this, all this experience has really brought me to, to where I am. And uh, I think that's a lesson for everybody, male or female, uh, whatever you do, uh, you do well and it prepares you for, for what's ahead. Yeah, well, it prepares, it, is it really prepares, by the way? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, this is one of the, this is one of the toughest things I've I've done in in, in my career, but I, I believe I, I believe all that I've learned and uh, all, all the experience I've, I've gone through uh, has made me um, has given me the capability to to manage uh, to to manage this airline and also to manage during this uh, during this time without losing my mind. So that, that's, a, that's a positive thing. Yes, that's a very positive thing. We can't lose our mind. Yeah, that's especially <laughs> perfect. Um, you said again, I, I'm just trying to, to get you, uh, you said very important, what is a passion? Mm -hmm. um, passion uh, is something what drives aviation. That's my true belief. Mm -hmm. uh, we in aviation is uh, like buying ticket in with uh, $1, but we cannot sell it back because what sort of we already bought in the industry. Um, what is that passion what drives you in aviation? What is that kind of, a, yeah? Uh, for, for me, the part of the, my passion for aviation is just the fact that, that uh, of, of how important the airline is to, to the development of the mm -hmm. country. And that really drives me. Uh, Rwanda is a key pillar in the economy of, of Rwanda. Rwanda is a lot landlocked country. Uh, Rwanda mm -hmm. is a very ambitious country. Um, and uh, we, we need, uh, despite being landlocked, we know we are airlinked. So it's important uh, for, for the country to leverage the airline. Uh, and that's the, the, the reason why uh, the, the airline was established. And that's, what, that, that's the reason why there's a lot of support from, uh, from the government in terms of supporting the airline, even during this, uh, through, this, uh, through this pandemic. 
And mm -hmm. uh, I, I saw that more than ever during the pandemic in, in terms of uh, the fact that everywhere was closed, but we still uh, managed to support the country in terms of uh, 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 transporting essential exports, uh, keeping the, the, the export industry going, bringing in uh, uh, much required medical supplies, uh, testing kits, PPEs uh, throughout throughout the pandemic. So I, I believe for a lot of uh, a lot of people working at Rwanda, their passion comes from the fact that uh, we were really uh, playing a part in the development of, of our country. What is that what you say to your employees every day that makes them to come back to work? It's exactly that. Uh, we, we, we have to keep this company going uh, because the, the country needs us and the country needs this airline to be strong and to continue growing. Um, otherwise, uh, we'll, we will have uh, the, the, the economy will have a really uh, it will, will be challenged in terms of, of both bringing in people for tourism, uh, for uh, trade, uh, uh, diplomacy. Um, so all those different avenues, uh, we are helping to strengthen uh, those links. What is that what you yourself say every morning to wake up? Uh, in the early hours, I believe, yeah? <laughs> yes. to get to work. Uh, I know that you have uh, two young children and combining, yes. oh, oh, it's just a few young children, oh, and, and combining uh, motherhood and making yourself to lead the general idea of the key national player, yeah, is, is quite tough. So is a well, it, it's it, it's tough for it, it is it is tough, but for for Rwanda, the, the unique thing I, I believe uh, about Rwanda is that so many women are doing that. Uh, mm -hmm. Rwanda is such an example of, of women empowerment, uh, not only in the continent but in the world. Uh, we have uh, we have the highest representation of women parliamentarians. We are sixty three percent, the highest in the world. Uh, we our cabinet is fifty one percent women. We have women uh, leading uh, large corporations, uh, NGOs, uh, banks, etc. Et so, um, uh, within in the country, uh, for me, I, I don't stand out at all. Uh, I think I only notice this when when I go for industry events and I realize how few women there are uh, in in the in the industry. But in the country, it, it, this is normal. This is business as usual. Um, the, 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 uh, the, the government really gives uh, has made a deliberate effort in terms of ensuring that women are participating in in the growth of the country, giving them uh, an opportunity to serve and giving them the tools to succeed. Uh, because that's also important. It's not only giving uh, women an opportunity, but uh, the structures have to be in place in order to support them and in, in terms of them to uh, supporting them to succeed in whatever they're doing. Uh, so I think Rwanda has done that very well. Uh, so for, for, as, as you say, for, 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 for me, uh, within the country, business as usual. <laughs> yeah, well, of course. Um, let me just for a second um, get into the audience and say, ladies and gentlemen, just try to uh, catch on what you want to say in terms of uh, reflecting your experience, your home-led experience to her experience, yeah? So perhaps some sort of questions what you will be thinking about for asking her in the future uh, within this session may reflect sort of what, what you want to uh, copy perhaps from, from what um, you want to do or what you want to ask her about what she's doing and how to reflect that. But for you, you just moved a little bit away from my question uh, <laughs> because if that little one grabs you on the hand in the morning and say, mommy, mommy, don't go to work. Yeah, it happens. It happens every day. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that. That's. I mean, how you uh, manage this, and perhaps how did your mom manage to grow someone like yourself? Yeah. Um, <laughs> how how to grow a leader? Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, ooh, that, that's uh, I'd have to ask my mom, but uh, I think <laughs> I think what's important, uh, uh, as, especially bringing up um, uh, children and especially girls, is instilling that sense of confidence uh, in them and uh, yeah. making 
uh, instilling uh, uh, confidence through uh, making them understand that they can do anything, uh, they're capable of doing anything that they want to do, uh, which, is, which is something that I'm, I'm, I'm also doing with my, with my, my own daughter. Uh, whatever she, she currently wants to be a lawyer and a DJ, so I'm like, okay, great, be a lawyer and a DJ. And, That's it. Uh, we'll you and <laughs> you can do it and you can be the best lawyer and DJ in the world. But, uh, but it, I think it starts from a very early age. Uh, I think women, we, we, we second guess ourselves a lot, uh, but it, it's important uh, to, to, to realize that we are capable of uh, so much uh, uh, and anything we put our mind to, uh, we'll achieve it. Yeah. Yeah, you see, we already kind of um, put a passion, flexibility, confidence, support from, uh, from the environment, from your country. Uh, again, ladies and gentlemen, just no, make a note of that because that, I think that's a very, very important point, one of the crucial points in terms of moving, um, in terms of getting uh, leadership. You mentioned that, uh, yes, um, in your airline and the general in the country, there are many uh, ladies um, in the management. Uh, yeah, I noticed on your management board, um, there are a pretty balanced management board. Um, how do you, I mean, how are you achieving that? What skills are you looking into people uh, when you are um, hiring ladies or gentlemen in your uh, management board? So what is that what you need uh, to stand out? Well, in, um, in our management team, we, we are fortunate. In, in our management team, we're about 43% uh, 43 uh, women. We're, we, still, we still haven't reached the 50% mark. So hopefully we're going to, we're going to get there soon. Um, generally, uh, in the airline, uh, women are still uh, underrepresented. Uh, the, the, enti the entire workforce is about 28 women. And when you go into the technical uh, side, the pilots and engineers, it becomes uh, uh, a little bit more worrying, uh, close to 10% uh, are women. So there's, uh, even for Rwanda Air and uh, being in such a progressive uh, country, we still have some, some ways to go. Um, but I, uh, what, what, what we are doing is, um, again, um, giving, giving women uh, an opportunity to, even when joining the airline, ensuring that when we're shortlisting candidates, we ensure that we have some women who are shortlisted, give them an opportunity uh, to, to compete. And once they're inside supporting them uh, in terms of flexibility, uh, especially flexibility in uh, working hours, uh, providing support wherever we can, um, and I, I think um, support is one of the, the, the biggest things uh, that women, women, uh, especially in, in this industry, need, not only at work, but also in the community, just having that support network, yeah. uh, whether it's you, the, your parents, the family, your friends, uh, it's, it's very, very important uh, to, to, allow, uh, to allow women to come to work and comfortably work with peace of mind, uh, without worrying about the kids, without worrying about the family, et cetera. Uh, so support is, 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 is very important. Um, uh, but, but again, we've, we've, we've done some good work, but there's still, uh, I believe there's still a long way to go and we're still challenging ourselves in terms of uh, getting to that uh, equitable representation of both men, men and women in the, in the, in the company. Yes, that's very important. You're saying you have a 50% um, uh, mark to get into the 50% of, uh, of a mixed gender? At least, at least 50. Uh, if we can exceed that, that's even better. Mm. But uh, we, should, we, should, we should see the population reflected within, within, the, within the company. Uh, why, why settle for 43%? If we have enough talented women, why, why not get to 60, 70%? Uh, as, as, long as, uh, as long as they're capable. Yeah, well, um, the only airline, other airline that I know on this level of figures is uh, Qantas, which have 40% of representation of, of ladies in the airline. Um, so your figures sound um, very good. Um, I saw the question coming from the audience, um, but unfortunately, um, sort of there was very quick in terms of a screen. Um, can you please, um, Maureen and Icy, can you um, show this question once again, please? Yes, Yolanta, uh, the question mm -hmm. is, uh, what are some of the hurdles that you have experienced in your aviation and leadership career or journey? Thank you, Maureen. <laughs> uh, well, uh, there the, the quite a number. I, I think the, the greatest hurdle is um, 
is is fear for, for, for me uh, coming into a into the aviation industry from a completely different industry um, and learning everything from from scratch was very very scary um, especially coming into such a male male dominated uh, male dominated industry uh, but uh, again what, what what that has taught me is we have especially as women we have to say yes a lot of a lot of the time as scary as it sounds, you say yes, and you go out and learn as much as you can about it, and then get the job done. Uh, there's just no room for fear anymore. Um, uh, so I, I think that that, that that was one of that was one of my my biggest one. Other than the technical learning, the technical aspects of of, of, of the job, but that one is something that you can overcome easily by uh, listening a lot uh, to 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 the people who are already there and who are good at what they're doing, and learning from from everybody else. Um, so th those were some of the hurdles. Uh, I'm still going through them uh, on a daily basis, but I've learned I've learned to overcome a lot of them. Yes, thank you very much. And thank you for the question, because I guess that um, fear is something what sits very deep in us and sometimes even very successful. And I'm a headhunter, I saw sort of, uh, for the CEO roles, I saw many, many um, senior individuals who um, in their private conversations say, yeah, we're afraid. And I believe mm -hmm. that pandemic also taught us uh, to be open about, our, about us being afraid. Yeah. Um, and what you just raised is very important and sort of, um, gets me into other area of questions I believe that um, is important. So, um, yeah, you're very cheerful, you're, sort of, you, you're very dynamic, you're very um, um, sort of um, get, get goer, yeah, someone. But um, is there anything that makes you sad, that makes you um, feel uh, blue? <laughs> other, than the, other than the fact that there are not enough women in the industry, that, that makes me very sad <laughs> on, yeah. a, on a daily basis. Um, uh, uh, well, uh, things that make me sad is uh, there's a lot, especially now uh, with, with all that we, we've gone through, just seeing uh, lives changed uh, by the pandemic, uh, the losses people have gone through, uh, the, the uncertainty from, especially from our staff, uh, uh, so, some staff we had to we had to let go of as well. That that for me was uh, was a very difficult time as, as well. But um, uh, with that, uh, uh, we keep in mind that we're we're getting out of this and we'll turn things around and hopefully bring the people that we that we let go of uh, to rejoin to rejoin the airline as well. So there the are many things. Uh, the, the the world has a lot of uh, sad things, but uh, I think we also need to focus on the positive and move forward. Um, as much as possible. That's absolutely, that's absolutely. And uh, that's again leads me to the uh, thing that unfortunately women was the first to be redundant in aviation during the pandemic. The statistics says that in terms of the whole redundancies in aviation, ladies was the first category and even more the ladies with children was the first categories to get redundant. And that's a really sad story. And I think that one of the purpose of this conference to bring this up and say that, look, the work-life balance, the being a successful a job doesn't mean that you don't have a family. So that you mm -hmm. have to make sure that your employer understands that and support that. Mm -hmm. So um, you just again mentioned that you had to get people redundant. You think that you can uh, get them to go back. So how that uh, looks, uh, how that fits in the picture of your growing? Again, before you were saying that your airline is growing and think to get back. Yeah. So what yeah. strategies you, you see here? In terms of bringing people back, or in terms, in terms of bringing of, people back, in terms of changing perhaps your HR policies to more look into the work-life balance. Yeah, I think uh, one of the few positive things about uh, the pandemic is, is that it's shown us that how, how that the fact that we we can work remotely. Uh, we we all don't have to be physically here in the office. So th this, I believe, bodes very well for for a lot of people, especially women. Uh, so. Uh, I think not only for Rwanda, but a lot of airlines, uh, people will be more uh, and leaders will be more open in terms of allowing that level of flexibility, allowing uh, women with small kids or who've just given birth to work from home. 
um, and providing them the, the support uh, to to be able to deliver while they're working while they're working from home. So um, uh, that that's one of the positive things that that's come out of it, and we are using that uh, a lot. Not only giving flexible hours, but also allowing people to work uh, to work virtually. Uh, we we took a phased approach in terms of reopening. So we we had some uh, for quite a number of months people working from home because we, we couldn't all be in the offices uh, given the the government. Uh, uh, directives in terms of how many people could be in offices. So a, a, a lot of people uh, worked from home. Some are still working from home even today. Uh, so uh, this is this is very positive. And uh, one thing that we would like to keep uh, going forward, uh, even as we get out of the pandemic and uh, continue with the new normal, uh, just allowing people to work remotely as well. Yes, that's that's very important that you sort of you you looking into uh, things like work life balance and um, and sort of uh, looking after your um, allied professionals uh, very um, capably uh, to sort of to get them to feel happy uh, and to feel uh, appreciated. Um, that's I think that's uh, something what we all in aviation need to look into the future. Um, but um, if uh, again, if talking about yourself. As a, as an individual, I have another question from the audience asking: What would you uh, be uh, willing to? What questions would you be willing to ask yourself, younger? What would you say to yourself back, younger? So, being now, what would you say to yourself, uh, say uh, ten years ago, or, or fifteen or twenty? I think uh, 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 to my younger self, I would I would tell I would tell myself to take more chances. I think I would have taken, although it sounds like I I, I I switched around a lot, I should have done a lot more of that, uh, explored more possibilities, um, uh, said yes a lot more uh, because I believe I I, I said no uh, to so many things which I should have said yes to. Uh, so it's it's that uh, I, I would tell my younger self to say yes a lot more. What would you say? Yes. Can, can you just can you just share a little bit more? That's that's very curious and very interesting. Um, is there anything um, in particular what you really regret? Um, <laughs> yeah, in particular, oof, uh, there's there, quite a number of them. Um, whether it's uh, moving to a, a different country or um, taking a particular job that I wanted, uh, I should have taken at that time. Uh, there are quite a few of those, uh, but uh, now um, I, th I think why I've learned uh, the importance of, of saying yes, uh, I remember um, a few, I think last year, or early this year or last year, um, I, I was asked to apply for a particular board position and I said, no, 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 I can't. I, I can't do that. I'm, I'm fairly new in the industry. I don't think I'm the right person for that. But the person who 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 was talking to me and who's really helped me in this in this industry, uh, who's a fellow CEO as well, very experienced, was like, "How else are you going to learn? Just do it and get on there, and then you learn from that." So from 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 there, I've I've just realized that you know what, whatever it takes, just say yes, and then. Go with the flow and learn as much as you can about it. Uh, get get as much information to to fulfill your role, and then get it done. Because there's nothing that I I believe there's nothing that is beyond my capability if I put my mind to it. And I believe that's the same for a lot of women and young girls as well. That's true. That's true. Uh, once again, audience, ladies and gentlemen, there's a few very important messages already through this interview have been said by Yvonne, and one just heard believe in yourself whenever you are whoever you are in whatever capabilities you are even if you are um, really sort of afraid of things if you are tied by uh, different responsibilities you need to believe yourself um you want um what would you say to um other ladies and gentlemen in different countries not just in africa i mean across the world um sort of to get into the uh, senior management or just generally management roles in aviation. Um, any particular advices? Uh, the, the main thing is to, to learn as much about the industry as possible and make yourself indispensable. Uh, uh, in the sense that um, stepping up and accepting projects and being recognized for the work that you do, because I, I, 
a lot of people shrink away from being noticed or being uh, uh, standing out in, in the crowd. But I, I, I think it's very important, and especially for women, uh, to make themselves at, uh, indispensable at work. So that when uh, you're out, uh, you have a cold and you're out sick, your boss actually notices, oh my God, Yvonne is not, is not in the office and you're actually missed because the, the people who um, can go away for a month and you don't, you don't even notice it, but that should not be you. Uh, make sure that you learn as much as, uh, about the, 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 the company, the industry and stand out as much as possible. Have you learned as much as possible from Rwanda? I, I think I still have a lot more to learn. I, I learn something new every every single day. Um, and I think that's the exciting thing about the uh, aviation industry. There's always something new. Uh, the, learning, the learning curve is so steep and it's continuous learning as well. Uh, new challenges come up, uh, new technology comes up, uh, new initiatives come up. So you're constantly, constantly learning. Uh, which which makes it which makes it exciting. I can't say that I'm, I'm bored at all. Uh, there's still a lot more to learn. There's still a lot more to do. Excellent. Um, again, moving open in the different story. We spoke a little bit about the past. Yeah, we spoke about the current. We spoke about the challenges and internal personal thing. Let's talk about future. Pandemic will go. Yeah. Um, sort of. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, it will, it will, and we need to do all about it. And this is my little speech. Please get vaccinated if you can. <laughs> Agreed. Um, good, good. Um, so yeah, so the future, uh, future for Rwanda, future for CEO in Rwanda. So mm -hmm. how that um, looks at the moment. I know that you are talking about the partnership with, uh, with the different airlines. Well, uh, the future for Rwanda, I, I'm, I'm very excited about uh, about the future for Rwanda because there's still so much potential. And uh, despite the fact that we've had to to shrink a little uh, during the pandemic in order in order to be ready to grow, uh, once we're out of this, uh, we're already starting to to, to grow. We've, uh, we've we established the majority of our network. We're adding additional frequencies. Uh, we've opened up uh, new routes. We've had uh, three new routes that uh, have opened up this this year. Uh, including Bangui and uh, Lubumbashi and Goma. We have uh, additional routes that we're looking at uh, at opening as well. Uh, we have, as you mentioned, uh, the partnership with Qatar Airways that's uh, that's being concluded uh, where they'll be taking 49% of, of the airline. So that is very exciting, uh, partnering with a world-class airline uh, like that. Uh, just the opportunities that are available in terms of uh, upskilling our workforce, leveraging each other's network. So it's it's very exciting. So we're, we're really looking forward to the, the, the coming years and hopefully we'll, we'll have the pandemic uh, way in the past and we'd have learned uh, how to how to to live in the new normal. Uh, so I'm excited and just being an airline in the African continent where the, the opportunities are so immense, there's so much untapped potential, so many more uh, cities to, to, link, to link up um, with, the, with the implementation of the African continental free trade area as well. Uh, I think that's, that uh, provides such huge opportunities for, for African airlines in terms of transporting people and goods. So the, the future looks very bright and I'm, I'm very excited about it, both uh, for the airline and myself uh, as the CEO of the airline. Uh, there's a lot more learning to do. Um, uh, so I'm, 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 I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm very excited about the future. Yeah, well, that, that sounds very interesting. Let me just again take this. Um, you said a couple of times about the uh, partnership and about the learning future. Qatar Airways has a great uh, aviation academy. They have a very, very strong education point. Um, yeah. Is there any plans of getting um, Rwandan professionals to study in Qatar so that knowledge exchange? Absolutely, that's that's a key, mm -hmm. uh, key priority for us. Uh, really. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we're learning from them and uh, uh, using their training academy as well. Uh, so we, we're, we're excited about uh, offering our passengers uh, a quality service. We want to see a big improvement in in terms of what we're in terms of the of the product that we currently have. Uh, so with upskilling our our staff, uh, I think the the there'll be a, a marked difference, and we're excited about that. Um, any particular programs that are available that might could be of interest to our audience? Education program. Uh, 
uh, educational programs were in, in uh, Rwanda Air or in, where is in, that? In, in in conjunction, well, um, it could be in Rwanda Air or in conjunction with, in connection, sorry, with Qatar Airways, with their um, with their knowledge academy. So, any particular um, programs oh. available? Then just just the looking at uh, the the the, uh, the cabin crew in terms of training our cabin crew, uh, training mm -hmm. our pilot. Uh, but also just uh, exchange, exchanging, uh, sending our, our, our staff, whether it's our commercial team or finance mm -hmm. team, there to learn from them, having different exchange programs. Uh, so the potential in terms of knowledge exchange is, 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 is huge. So that, that, that for me is very exciting. And I think it's very exciting for the staff at Rwanda as well. Excellent. So other words, the, the, uh, whatever um, um, candidates that wants to get a job in, around there, if they're successful, they can look into the possibility to um, have an exchange with uh, Qatar Airways and learn from them and learn from the your existing programs. Well, we we hope so. That's 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 the plan. Uh, Great. And, uh, we're looking we're looking forward to that. That's that's very good. That's that, that's very interesting because again, it adds another point of of possibility. Yeah? Sort of the, the 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 partnership, the global partnerships for African mm. Airlines, what doors it opens. Um, and of course it opens the door for better knowledge, better, um, um, yeah. I have another yeah. question from the audience, what I saw from uh, from a little screen, but again, I was too excited to talk to you all. So I do apologize, Maureen, can you, um, can you sort of um, repeat um, this question aloud for me, please? Yes, the question is regarding the attractiveness of uh, aviation. And uh, the question is asking, how do we make sure that young talent join aviation industry instead of other industries that look greener? Wow, uh, yeah, that, that's an interesting <laughs> one. <laughs> um, well, in, in terms of uh, attracting young talent, um, and, and for me, this is especially for, for, for women. I think the, the aviation industry and airlines, especially airlines, need to show, uh, need to put forward the women who are working there at, uh, at the forefront as well, to, so that uh, they can see themselves in the company. Because a lot of the times, as I mentioned, I've gone to a lot of industry events and you can count the number of women uh, who, who, who are actually there. Uh, and and that's 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 very worrying because uh, as a young person looking at that, uh, you you you'd wonder is there really space for me in this situation? But it's it's really important uh, to to spotlight uh, all the amazing women within the industry who are doing such an incredible job and to to highlight the, the fact that uh, there is space for for young talent. Uh, and once they're in in the in the company, really uh, providing that structure and support for them to succeed as they as they move up uh, move up the ladder, not just bringing them in and then uh, leaving them high and dry, but uh, providing uh, the, the structure for them, the mentorship, um, uh, giving them opportunities to compete for other jobs. Uh, I think that that's that's the, the flexibility we talked about, especially for women. Uh, I think that's really important uh, for them to stay within the industry so that that has a ripple effect in terms of attracting other young people to come into the to come into the industry because it is an exciting industry and any young person would want to be in this industry really i i wish i joined when i was much younger uh, but uh, I, I think there's there's so much and there's so much to do there's so many uh, areas to explore in in terms of the uh, in terms of this industry so uh, i would encourage uh, young people male or female especially female uh, to really look at the aviation sector in terms of their career. And it's not only uh, the ones in the technical field, it's not only, we don't only need pilots and uh, engineers, we need young people in every department uh, in the company. So whether you're an accountant or a legal person, or we, we need young people, young women in all areas of the aviation industry. And DJs as well. And DJ, yeah, that would be good too. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, I think that's perfect. That's absolutely perfect because I fully agree. Again, being a headhunter and working for airline industry for 20 plus years, um, aviation is not just um, pilots. And uh, the, uh, well, again, coming from the Eastern Europe, we have a very big belief in Eastern Europe that the airlines are led by former pilots, uh, yeah. all traditional. 
which is in fact in contemporary world, not really, isn't it? And you yeah. you yourself is the perfect living example of somebody coming from a technology background, commercial background, marketing background, everything together, yeah? Leading, successfully leading airline. Um, so you um, in, in, in conclusion, in conclusion, um, what would you say to our Ukrainian, I'm, I'm originally from Ukraine, our Ukrainian, Russian, <laughs> Eastern European, African, uh, old fashioned thinkers, um, what we need to do to become like Rwanda or become a successful or sort of, what, what is that um, final tips that comes together with being flexibility, be flexible, being proactive, being determined, being open-minded, sometimes being sad and sometimes being worried, which is okay. Yeah. So what's yeah. that? Oh, well, uh, the, the, the main thing is, uh, the, the, the main thing I want to put across is really the fact that uh, we need to change the face of aviation. Uh, we, we, have a, we have a major problem in terms of uh, the, the percentage of women who are, uh, who are in the aviation industry right now. And as you mentioned, uh, that old school mentality that aviation is, uh, is uh, for men and uh, all the people, uh, the, the ones, the CEOs of, of airlines should be pilots, et cetera, or engineers, uh, that, that's, that's really in the past. Uh, we should, I, I really want to encourage young people, young women to join the industry in whatever in whatever capacity, in whatever department, because it's, it's such a dynamic and exciting industry. Uh, the opportunities, uh, once you come in, are uh, endless. You can move from one department to the other. Whatever you're really passionate about, you can find within the within the aviation industry. And for the leaders in, in uh, the aviation industry is to give uh, young people a chance, give young women a chance to really uh, not only join the company, but retain them within the company by providing them with the tools to yeah. succeed. Um, yes. And as I said, I've, I've seen this, we see this, uh, uh, this success story here in Rwanda. Uh, there was a deliberate effort, bring in women, uh, equip them with the tools, support them, and they'll succeed. And we can see that, that success uh, in, in, in the country in Rwanda, uh, one of the fastest growing uh, economies, uh, at least before, before the pandemic. And even in the airline uh, where we're, although we are a small airline, we're really, uh, we're an ambitious airline, just like the country, and we want to succeed, but we need, we need uh, that representation of women and young people uh, in, in the airline in order to succeed. Yeah, well, I guess this is absolutely great um, uh, roundup, absolutely great closure of, of this interview. Let me just little add that women, by, by, the, um, by the, um, the study of the Forbes that was done in, in year 2020, a woman drive 70 to 80% of consumer purchasing. And the diversity and getting this mentality of the lady developing the, our intentional consumer purchasing into the aviation, which is in fact a consumer driven industry is extremely mm -hmm. important. So um, you won, I wish you all the best. I wish all the best around there. And I wish Thank all the best to your family and I hope your children <laughs> will see you more. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Alanza. And all the best. Thank you. And to you too. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, to our guest, uh, Yvonne, for taking the questions from our moderator. And thank you for, um, making us uh, go through the, the insights on the journey of um, one of our role models we have. Yvonne is one of our women role models we have in Africa and uh, a very um, prominent member of AFRA. Uh, she's been the chair of the AFRA Executive Committee and uh, currently also is a member of AFRA Executive Committee. We do look up to Yvonne and um, very good to have learned some of the uh, personal story accounts and insights uh, on your journey from tech to aviation and uh, what recommend recommendations you have for the industry. What is encouraging to hear is that from today's all women panel, we have some resonating points that uh, are coming out on what we need to, to do to uh, promote women in aviation and uh, the the, the recommendations that we need to have, um, there are the four Cs, which now are the five Cs, confidence, 
competence, uh, women, we can do it. Uh, anything you set your mind to do, you can do it. And I'm very encouraged uh, on um, learning of, uh, you came and had to learn everything from scratch. I do, I do remember 2018, uh, the IATA <laughs> diploma that uh, we were doing. And uh, the, the episode was in Rwanda, from Kenya to Rwanda, and uh, we did the Kenya edition in Kenya. And when it went to Rwanda, you're one of the, 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 the class and uh, having learned from scratch and implementing very well, I, I really commend you, Yvonne. Please continue shedding, uh, being a light to uh, other young girls and uh, women in aviation. In the, in the morning, uh, today we, we, we discussed, and uh, one, some of the recommendations is that we need to be uh, mentors, we need to be sponsors to other young women. Please uh, continue uh, doing that. And uh, we need to be, uh, charismatic, we need to be committed. I, I, I like the commitment every time we want to, to have a woman on our panel, Yvonne is always there to, to support. Thank you so much. And uh, this brings us to a close of uh, this uh, exciting interview. I do hope that it brought out uh, some good uh, uh, insights and recommendations which we will wrap up at the end of the conference. And um, let us keep uh, walking the walk and walking the talk. Uh, Yvonne, goodbye, thank you Yolanta. And uh, for the next session, which is another very exciting interview, we have our first Boeing 787 African captain, a woman captain who will uh, be on uh, taking the stage, Captain Koki Mutungi. And uh, to join that session, please go to the attendee hub, click on the executive interview with Captain Koki and let's meet on the other side. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you.